Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity 3D Platformer tutorial series. Now, we've got our pickup system all going in the game, so let's add some more systems into the game, and we're going to take a look at how to add uh, a way for our player to have health and to be damaged by other objects. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, create the health system that will control everything. So we're going to go into our scripts folder, like this, and go create C Sharp script that we will call... Uh, health manager and we'll open this up here so our health manager is basically what we're going to use to keep track of how much health our player has so to know how much player how much health we have we will need obviously a, a value for our current health so we'll say public int current health without the capital E in the middle for our player to know how much health they should have to start off with, well, we'll need a value that we can also use to say, hey, what, how much health should we start off with and how much health should be the maximum amount of health we can have. So we can say here, public int max health. So that'll just be whatever our maximum health is. And then as soon as the game starts, we'll just say, okay, once the game gets going, our current health is equal to whatever our max health is. So as soon as we start the game, we know we start off with full health. Just the, the, the way it would be very handy for us to be able to have. So that's fine. That's our basic idea of what's going on here. Let's create a couple of functions that we can use to um, hurt the player and heal the player. So we'll create a public void hurt player that is going to take in an int value that we'll call damage. So that'll just be however much damage we want to give to the player. So very straightforwardly, all this should do then is say, okay, whatever our current health is, we're going to say minus equals damage. So that'll just take away our damage value from whatever our current health is in the game. So nice and straightforward. That's all we want that to do. We'll create another function called public void heal player and we'll say int heal amount like that and here we'll just say okay if we're being healed do the exact same thing take our current health and set it to be uh, plus equal heal amount so however much we want the player to heal by now we don't want our heal amount to go any higher or sorry our current health we don't want it to go any higher than what our maximum health is so we'll just add an extra thing here to say if our current health is greater than our maximum health then uh, current health is equal to maximum health just in case for some reason we pick up say we say our max health is five our current health is three and we pick up uh, an object that will heal us for i don't know ten <laughs> um Instead of setting our current health then to be 13, we'll just reset it back to be 5, which is our max health. Okay, very simple, very straightforward. That's all we're going to do in our health manager for now. We can just save that and we'll go back into the game. And then we're going to add that health manager to our game manager here. So add component health manager. And we're going to say our maximum health, we'll say, we'll just, we'll start our player off with 5 health. So now when the game starts, we start running and the game has our, our current health is automatically set to 5. We can see it up here, set to 5. So that's perfect. So now we need to have um, an object that will actually hurt us in the game. And we need to create, obviously, the, uh, the script that will make an object damage us. But we need an actual object that looks like it's going to do some damage. So in the in a link down below the video, there will be a, a link to the resources pack that we've been using so far in the series. And within that, we have a folder called uh, Nature Pack Extended. And this is a, a pack of 3D objects created by the extremely awesome Kenny, Kenny NL. So if you go to Kenny.nl, you can also get this pack there. Uh, it's really handy and really helpful. He puts all these amazing assets out for free for anyone to use, so you're free to use them in your own games. So we're going to take advantage of that. And if we go into Uni Unity Package here, 
we see we've got a nature pack for unity here so we can just click and drag and drop this into our project and click back in here and it creates all these files and folders for us to use so we can just import that just like that wait for it to just drag them all in let me take a couple of seconds and now we'll see here we've got a new folder called the nature pack folder uh, I'm gonna click and drag this actually into our models folder overall uh, like that and so we've got a huge big long list of all the models we want to use I know the specific model that we want to use here though is um, nature pack 56 where is this this guy here so this is a little cactus kind of thing this is what we're going to use to as a visual tell that this is what's going to hurt our player so we'll just click and drag this and drop it into the scene there like that so perfect we got nature pack 56 here uh, of course at the moment it's just that's that's not a very enticing name for us to use so we're going to change the name of this to be cactus like that we're going to break the prefab that it currently has so we're going to say game object up here break prefab instance and we're going to make this a new prefab so we're going to click and drag this into our prefabs folder like that so we've got our cactus here but of course at the moment it doesn't do anything so we've got our player we can just run through this little cactus that's not very good that's not doing anything so let's give this some physicality within the world so the first thing we're going to do is go to our cactus we're going to add a box collider to it nice and simple we could add, add a capsule collider which would kind of be a little bit more interesting oh no I added a box collider 2d that's the wrong one a box collider a normal box collider like that and you can see at the moment our box collider actually appears kind of in the ground away from the object and that's not really where we want to put it um, it's kind of a bit offset from where we are so what we'll do is I'm gonna move the cactus itself up to zero like that uh, no it didn't want to move up hmm, I don't know why the position didn't change the way we wanted it to there but we're gonna move it up like this to put them all uh, no we don't want to put them all at zero what am I doing undo that we just put the Y value at zero so we've got our box kind of it's at the moment it's halfway in the ground and halfway up so what we're actually going to do is put the Y one like that and we're going to move the cactus mesh object down so it's touching the ground like that kind of roughly I think it should be actually minus one uh, that's fine and then we can see the cactus itself is still offset from the box here if we kind of drag the camera over so we're going to move our cactus so it just kind of roughly goes into place we don't need to be too accurate with this it doesn't really matter too much just so the cactus is kind of roughly within the box uh, like that so now we can see our cactus box is just like that let's drag this box down so it's all the way on the ground so we will go to edit the collider here and we're just going to click on the little dot to drag it down to the ground it doesn't really matter if it goes through the ground that's not really that doesn't really bother us too much but we do want to shrink it down on the sides here so on the x-axis I'm going to shrink it down so it's roughly the size of the cactus like that and the same on the z-axis so now overall you can see the cactus is kind of roughly around our object we don't need to be too accurate with this it doesn't really matter too much so now if we go to play the game we've got our box collider attached so now we can still we can run and we can bump against the cactus that's perfectly fine uh, but of course that's not still not doing any damage to the player and how we're going to make it do damage to the player is by adding another box around it which will act as a trigger so we'll stop playing the game we're going to take the current box collider we have we will click on the little gear icon go to copy component and then click on the gear icon again and paste component as new so we've got two box colliders now we're going to make this one a trigger and then all we're going to do is increase the size by grabbing the different values so we'll make it a little bit bigger on x-axis a little bit bigger on the z-axis and a little bit bigger on top as well so again uh, we've got this little object created now it still doesn't affect us at the moment but that's why we need to add a little script but also it's not stopping us getting any closer to the cactus so basically what will happen now is whenever we get a little bit too close to the cactus we'll want to check if our player is within this new little trigger box and if he is then we want to cause actual damage to the player and how can we cause the damage to the player well 
we're going to create a new script that we're going to call C sharp heart player. Oh, that should have a T heart player. And we'll open this up in Visual Studio. And then what we're going to need to decide is how much damage should our object do to the player. So public int damage to give. Now we'll want to make that a different value for different objects within the world. But just so we know that any object we give the script to will actually do damage. By default we're going to say damage to give equals 1. So that way no matter if we forget to set any value within the script it'll automatically uh, have a damage of 1 instead of defaulting to 0. So it'll be 1 by default, so that's perfect. And then what we'll do is down here, we'll say uh, private void on trigger enter. So basically this checks and see for, it checks for any objects that enter the trigger box attached to uh, that are any trigger boxes that have this heart player script attached to it. That's what it's looking for here. And it's looking for another collider that we are going to call other. And we'll put our open and close brackets like that. Um, uh, my collider thing is not turning blue here like it should be. Uh, so I'm just going to close out of Visual Studio and reopen it because sometimes that can be a little weird issue that happens with Visual Studio. Uh, open it up here again. There we go. Now it's working the way it should be. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't really know why that happens. It's just something. It's like it doesn't get registered properly within Visual Studio. So if you if sometimes if sometimes that happens for you, the easiest solution is just turn it off and turn it on again. So what we want to do is check and see what object just entered our trigger area. So we want to find out if the object that just entered it is the player. So if we go back to Unity here, if we go to the player, we know one way that we can identify the player is by looking at the tag. We can check and see if it's the player tag, much like we did with our pickup script or we had a checking for the player. This time we're going to have a checking for the player again so that we don't uh, try and add, uh, so we don't try and hurt any other objects that should be the player. So we can say here if other dot game object dot tag equals player. So we see if the player has entered this area. Well, in that case, uh, we know that we've just um, hit the player, so we need to do damage to him. So we will find object of type. Uh, oh, we should have a sharp bracket there. Find object of type health manager. So find uh, any object within the world that has the health manager script. And then on that script, we want to run heart player. And we need to pass in how much damage we're going to give to heart to player. And that is our damage to give value up here. So we'll just say damage to give within the brackets like that. Save this, go back into Unity, and we'll let it compile for a second. And if we click on our game manager so we can see what our current health values are, if we press play now, we run over and hit the cactus. Oh, well, nothing's going to happen, I just realized, because we didn't actually add that script to our cactus. So we need to add a component here, uh, heart player. We can see by default it gave us our one damage press play and we will go and highlight the game manager again so we see we have five health at the moment now let's go over here we run against it and we can see our current health goes down to four run against it again down to three two one zero and we can keep going down below zero we will add a way to actually uh, damage and deal with death within our world as we go forward but for right now we're just happy that we've set up a way for our current health to our, our player to take damage whenever we run into this object. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want uh, our, our little dude here to do. But of course at the moment if we run into this object, well although our player takes damage, 
it's not really very noticeable within our game world. We can just run into it and then we can just hang out here for a while if we want to. That looks a little bit weird. So what we're going to do in the next episode is take a look at adding knockback to our player to knock him back within the world and make it more visually obvious that we've just hit against something that has done us damage. So thanks for watching this episode and I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness.